Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name is Hannah and on this channel I post a lot of anti-MLM content. As always, I'll link a playlist here and down below. This is my big anti-MLM playlist. This is the 49th top fails video. We have over 30 horror story videos. I have deep dives into different MLM companies. There are several Zoom calls that we go over from different companies as well. So if any of that kind of content does sound interesting to you, I would love it if you would consider subscribing. Consider liking this video, leaving a comment. All those things really help to support my channel and I appreciate you you so much for doing that. I have MLM top fails 49 coming at you. The cringe just never stops. Like I always think I've seen it all, right? No, absolutely not. This video is a doozy. It's like one big face palm. Lots and lots of cringe worthy things we're going to be looking at today. But before we get into the clips, I want to say a huge thank you to Fabulous for sponsoring today's video. Fabulous is the number one self care app to help you build better habits and achieve your goals. The app is designed with a behavioral science approach and it walks you through small manageable steps you complete every day to help you build long lasting healthy habits. Everything on the Fabulous app is super customizable and there's two main ways you can get the most of it. The first way is through specific habit tracking. You can customize specific habits that you want to incorporate into your morning, afternoon, and evening routines, such as drinking more water, eating a nutritious breakfast, spending some time tidying up your space. There's over a hundred habits to choose from on the app or you can create your own. The second way to utilize the app is through dedicated programs called called journeys. These help guide you towards your long-term goals, such as how to build an exercise habit or how to deepen your concentration and focus. Right now, I'm actually midway through a seven day reading challenge. I admit I am not a huge reader. It's definitely an area of my life I know I can improve in, but the Fabulous app has been great at giving me those gentle reminders. Hey, make time, sit down, read a little bit today. And it's been really nice to prioritize that at the end of a long day where I am primarily staring at screens and clicking those bubbles next to your daily goals saying that you've completed them is the most satisfying thing. If you would like to start building your ideal daily routine, the first 100 people to click the link in the description box are going to get 25% off their Fabulous subscription. Thanks again to Fabulous for sponsoring today's video and let's get on to these MLM top fails clips. All right, the first thing I have to show you has been sent to me multiple times because of how ridiculous it is. This was posted on the Instagram account, No Shame Sales Game. I'm not going to be blurring her face. I'm not going to be hiding her username because actually I have an entire video on my channel all about this specific account and how problematic it is. And the woman Colleen who runs this account is like a self-proclaimed network marketing coach and she sells courses and she has a huge Instagram following and would otherwise be considered a public figure. So for those reasons, I'm not going to be censoring anything here. I often wonder if people who are like super anti network marketing or get upset about being recruited for network marketing are also like anti Girl Scouts because that's like the OG network marketing company and it's for kids. Yet another ridiculous analogy from Colleen that makes absolutely no sense if you give it half a second of critical thinking. Let's think about what defines an MLM or a network marketing company. It's the fact that people are financially incentivized. Cooper, really all up in my business today. It's the fact that people are financially incentivized to recruit other people. Do Girl Scouts get paid to recruit more Girl Scouts? No, case closed. The reason that the Girl Scouts organization exists is not because they have a product to sell and they're trying to recruit other people to come and sell that product. Yes, the Girl Scouts sell cookies. We all know this, but it's just a yearly fundraiser in the same way that my high school dance team had a yearly car wash fundraiser, in the same way that my elementary school would have walkathons, in the same way that my university holds auctions. Does that mean that my dance team, elementary school, and university are all MLMs? No, Colleen, because that doesn't make logical sense. Being involved with an organization that occasionally sells a product as a fundraiser does not automatically mean that that organization is an MLM. Because again, the thing that defines a multi-level marketing company is the fact that there are multiple levels of people who are being recruited into the scheme for the sole purpose of making money off of one another. Girl Scouts do not climb in a hierarchical pyramid solely based on how many cookies they sell and how many other Girl Scouts they recruit. What she's doing right here with this reel and pretty much her entire Instagram account, if we're being honest, is she's giving an example of a logical fallacy. By definition, a logical fallacy is a statement that seems to be true until you apply the rules of logic. Then you realize that it's not. Logical fallacies can often be used to mislead people to trick them into believing something they otherwise
otherwise wouldn't. That is exactly what's going on here. And this is what Colleen has built her Instagram account based on. The foundation of her arguments are logical fallacies. They are things that at surface level, yeah, maybe that makes sense because Girl Scouts, they sell a product, they sell cookies. And yeah, sometimes they do recruit other Girl Scouts into the organization. But once you apply one tiny bit of critical thinking, of logical reasoning, it doesn't take much for that entire argument to crumble. And it's not long before you realize this doesn't make sense at all. But she's got an effective strategy here with this because quite honestly, if you are getting involved with an MLM, and I mean this in the least snarky way possible, if you're getting involved with an MLM, there's a good chance there wasn't a lot of critical thinking up front to begin with, or else you probably wouldn't have joined. Because remember, people get involved with these companies based on hopes and dreams and wishes and the glitz and glamour that they think is gonna come to them. And then once you're in that organization, it's also encouraged to not step outside the organization to look at alternate information. You are continually encouraged to not think critically, to not look at outside sources of information. And I say all of that because I really do believe that the No Shame Sales Game Instagram account plays into this idea that people looking at these posts probably aren't gonna think that hard about them. They're gonna look at it, they're gonna watch it, read it. It's gonna be validating. It's gonna confirm what they already believe to be true about the industry of network marketing. And that's where the thought process ends. They move on, they continue scrolling. And I think that this reel in particular got sent to me so many times because it's one of the more blatantly obvious examples of these logical fallacies. Because to people who aren't in an MLM, well, you take one look at that and you realize that is not true. That doesn't make any sense. But then you go to the 200 comments on that post and it is mass amounts of MLM huns going, oh my gosh, I didn't think of it that way, but it's so true. And in my opinion, this particular Instagram account has so many followers, has so much success because it's pretty much one of the only pro MLM accounts out there. And this is where MLM reps go to feel validated. This is the kind of content they want to surround themselves with because it confirms their beliefs and it's not going to challenge those beliefs and it's not gonna require them to think that critically about what they're involved in. This video is of a Monate rep trying to compare what she's doing to influencing, which you know is an argument I love to debunk. I am gonna go to the gym like right now, but I wanted to get on here because gonna be a good day and tomorrow Aspen and myself are hosting an opportunity call for anyone that has been interested in the business um we're gonna break down like why monetizing your scroll and your social media is so key right now if you guys think about it I want you to think about like the world in general and like the advertising and how brand like how brands grow their their brand they are literally using people like me and you, not using, but like they're go they're growing their brand through people like me and you who advertise basically for free for them. Oh, she just said the quiet part loud that companies use you for quote, free advertising for their brand. That is not true. That's not the case for actual legitimate brand deals, but that is the case for MLM companies. So it's interesting that she's kind of making that connection here. MLM companies do not pay their reps based on the advertising they do. They do not pay them to post. They only pay them if they're able to convert that advertising into a sale. And they get that payment in the form of a commission. So if you join an MLM and you never succeed at selling the product, then congratulations, all you are is free advertising for that company. You've just created God knows how many social media posts promoting this company, promoting these products, and you're getting exactly nothing out of it. And that's the difference between legitimate sponsored brand deals and MLM companies. She almost gets it. Or they're working with influencers um, and having them influence their brand and they're paying them. I um, I've gotten reached out to by several brands to post on my social media for them. And this is really very, it's very common for people who are already posting on social media to get reached out by brands and them to want to you to post about their stuff. Um, either, you know, they'll send you free stuff and you post about it. They'll offer, you know, a certain amount of money, but I just really haven't explored that. I'm going to start exploring it a little bit more if brands are going to pay me really well, but I haven't explored it because I don't want to just get sent something if I don't actually like it and then talk about it. I'm not that type of person who's going to post about it just to get paid. Like I'm, if I'm going to post about it, you know that I'm going to love it and I'm going to be obsessed with it. And I think the really cool thing about working on social media and with the company that we work for working with Monate is they pay you exponentially 
financially well. Like they are not just sending you free products for you to post about them, they are paying you. Did she just say that Monet pays her exponentially well compared to other brands? Surely I did not hear that right. That is a hot take. Because generally speaking, of course it depends on the brand and what you agree to, but generally speaking, if you're gonna choose to partner with a brand, they're gonna send you that product for free for you to try, and then they're also gonna cut you a check in exchange for your content, in exchange for what they call deliverables, whether that's for Instagram story slides, whether that's a post on the Instagram grid, whether that's a one minute slot at the beginning of your YouTube video, like you saw at the beginning of this one. And the brand is gonna give you that compensation in exchange for those deliverables regardless of how many product sales that actually converts to for them. You cannot convince me that MLM companies offer better compensation than that. Because in Mon8, you have to pay for the product. You have to buy into the business opportunity. You have to continually be spending your own money and hitting certain goals just to remain in that company. And you don't get paid unless you successfully sell that product. In absolutely no universe is being in an MLM better compensation than getting a paid sponsorship. For example, Every time you get a customer, you're getting 15%. Every time you get four customers, you're getting you're getting a $60 bonus, but this month it's doubled, so you're getting a $120 bonus. So for four customers, so you post about, you get products, you post about them, people want to get in on the products as well. So for four customers, you're getting a $120 bonus plus 15% commission. That's like $180 for four customers. How unreal is that versus you just getting sent products and just posting them for free? That's why you wouldn't agree to a brand deal where your only compensation is free product. Simple as that. You are in control. You get to choose which brand deals you accept. And there are plenty of brands out there, specifically smaller brands, that their strategy is just offering people on social media free product in exchange for a shout out. And for some people that seems like a fair trade and they'll say yes and they'll do it and that's fine. But that's not the way that all brand deals go and you have the autonomy to say back, sure, I would love to try out your product. Send it to me, I'll try it out. If I like it, then I'm gonna agree to this kind of post for this set rate. And that's a far sweeter deal than joining an MLM. But honestly, even promoting a brand in exchange for just free product, that is still a better deal than being in Mon8. Because if you join Mon8, you are paying the company to promote their products. That is not a smart business deal on your part. I think that's so cool, and I think that's what makes our brand so special is you're getting compensated very well for doing something that you're already doing for sharing products that you are genuinely obsessed with and that is what our team is all about and that is what we're going to talk about tomorrow on the call is just how to turn your social media um from zero to a hundred how to grow how to engage how to um monetize how to make money on social media how to post the reels how to put you know to grow your following all those things so that's tomorrow it cuts her off at the end, but she posts this slide advertising this Zoom call, this opportunity call that she wants you to be a part of. It is just astounding to me that someone actually thinks that being in an MLM is better than an actual brand deal. I, I don't get it. Like, I cannot comprehend it. That was some incredible mental gymnastics we just witnessed. The next thing I have to show you, and I wish I was kidding, is a Norwex Hun licking a cutting board with raw chicken on it. And this particular style reel has kind of been going around recently. I know that Chelsea just featured a clip very similar to this in one of her recent videos, but I wish I was kidding. I got like three or four variations of this exact reel from different Norwex Huns. So I'm wondering if this is something that is circulating in the community. Someone's upline gave this grand idea and now everyone's trying it out and posting it. I can't even wrap my head around it, but this situation has come up in one of my horror story videos before. Someone wrote in saying they went to a Norwex pitch unknowingly, and part of the demonstration was showing how these cloths can clean a cutting board that had raw chicken on it using just water and how it's still safe to lick, apparently. It is so disgusting, I can't handle it. But here you go, buckle up. Chicken all over my Norwex cutting board. I'm gonna show you how with just the Norwex microfiber cloth and water, you can effectively clean even raw meat, raw chicken juice. I will even lick it to show you how confident I am. Yes, I did lick it. Now I'm gonna test it and make sure that it was safe that I just did that or actually just show that to you because I'm confident that I got a good clean clean with just my Norwex microfiber and water. And yep, there it is, green means clean. 
Just prove that it's a working test swab. I'm gonna put it on the chicken, which clearly has chicken juice and proteins on it, and show you that it in fact does turn purple. I shouldn't be surprised. Hello, my baby, welcome back. The lengths that people are willing to go to sell a product is astonishing. But I have two things I wanna point out here. The first thing is that those clips were spliced together. In one shot, she's wiping off the cutting board with the Norwex cloth and then it cuts and the next shot, she's licking it. We don't know what went on between those two clips that were then cut together. For all we know, she took that cutting board over to the sink, she washed it with hot soapy water and then she came back and licked it. If she was really trying to be convincing, she would not have made that little unnecessary splice right in the middle, she would have just let the footage run. To me, I suspect creative editing, but I digress. The second argument you could make here is that, sure, let's give her the benefit of the doubt. Let's say it really does clean that well. What I will say is that there have been studies on this. I'll link one of these studies below, and this compares the effectiveness of different kinds of cloths between like cotton and microfiber and terry towel and things like that. And what I kind of gathered based on the Googling I did is that it is pretty well accepted that microfiber towels do a really good job of cleaning hard surfaces. And that's because they're woven with apparently positively charged polyester that attracts the negatively charged dirt, grime, liquid, whatever it is that you're trying to wipe up. And it's thought to be that microfiber is a really good way to quickly clean something up without the use of harsh chemicals. You can clean things up using just water. So the point being that this Norwex microfiber cloth may work exactly the way she's claiming it does, but they're not the only microfiber cloth on the market. You can go and buy a bulk package of these from your local store and they're gonna work the exact same way. So knowing that, there really is no good reason to be spending $19 on a single Norwex cloth when you can get a 36 pack on Amazon for nearly the same price. If you are buying into these claims, if you are intrigued by the cleaning ability of microfiber cloths, let this be a reminder that you do not need to buy it from an MLM and support that business model in order to try that kind of product. Remember that MLM products are only more expensive than the market price because there are multiple levels of people taking cuts of that commission. The company needs to take a cut, the rep who sold it takes a cut, the rep's uplines take a cut, and that is why they are marked up so much higher than anything else you would normally find. It does not mean they're special, it doesn't mean they're better quality, that overinflated price is only accounting for the business model in which it is being sold. This this photo was posted on Facebook and it says, I apologize for my last post. My question was, I'm a pure romance partner and I'm in need of $99 to pay my due in order to keep my shopping link open, if that makes sense. I only have $4 in cash app. Would I be able to make a post asking for the help for it? I can show proof that it's past due. This is heartbreaking. Quite literally begging people on Facebook to cash app you money so that you can afford to stay in your MLM, if this is what you're resorting to, to remain in your pyramid scheme, that should be the biggest sign to you that it's time to get out. This is kind of like a gut punch reality check that remember, these companies oftentimes will strip people of their last dollar because they're doing everything they can to remain in the company, to remain active, to remain a participant in something that they truly believe is going to make them rich, is going to give them financial freedom down the road, and that they just need to stick it out a little bit longer and maybe one day those dreams will come true. It's so sad. People go into debt trying to keep up with these quotas and remain active and pay the fees and place the orders and hit the requirements. And that's all because these companies are selling a dream. And I hate to see evidence like this that the reps in these companies haven't come to their senses yet. And even though they cannot afford to remain in the company and they're going to Facebook to crowdsource funds, that's still not enough for them to realize that this is a scam and that they need to get out. How absolutely devastating is that? This is somebody crying on social media about how much they love their MLM. You guys. <laughs> I'm like stupidly emotional right now. I just was crying and I'm trying to like cut it out. But yesterday was May 1st and I was planning things out for the month. I was reflecting um, and I decided to look through and pull out my old like journals and notebooks from when I first started my business um, at the beginning of 2020 and <laughs> God just works in such crazy ways you guys first of all I found the pros and cons list I made a pros and cons list because I'm that type of person 
I made a pros and cons list of what it would mean to start this business before I made the decision to. And my problem was that I couldn't come up with any cons. <laughs> and that was my first sign. I have some cons for you if you would like to add them to the list. Lose money, sacrifice relationships, get brainwashed, waste your energy, your social media accounts turn into a fan page for your MLM, you embarrass yourself on the daily, you're wasting your time doing something you can't put on a resume, it's a scam, it's a cult. Did I miss anything? So I just have to read you a couple of sentences from this. This is December 30th, 2019. I even put the time down, 9.55 p.m., okay? My hands shake as I write this because I just made a huge decision. I know it was the right one because I'm scared shitless. <laughs> I wrote about some other things, but on the end of this page, I said, I am so excited to be in an environment where I feel inspired to truly rise to my potential and know I'm trying. 2020 is two days away and I'm not letting fear run the next chapter of my life. And I <laughs> am reading that and I'm so proud of that girl. <laughs> like, Okay, the reason I wanted to share that with you and that I'm like so emotional over this is because I'm someone who is so ambitious. I have such big goals and a big vision for my life that every time I accomplish something, knowing how far I want to go, I don't really take the time to like celebrate my growth, celebrate the wins and the things that I've accomplished because I just have this I'm not there yet mentality and that is one of my toxic traits. I don't think it's a toxic trait to be ambitious and driven and hardworking and goal oriented, but I do think it's toxic to be focusing all of that energy towards an MLM. Think of all the opportunities that would open up for her if she took all of those traits and applied them to something that wasn't a money-making scheme. She's been in the company for over two years, and I know for a fact that the highest rank she's gotten to within the past year has been market builder. That is rank four out of 11, making roughly $6,000 for the entire year. She she deserves so, so much more than that. And in my opinion, there are plenty of other opportunities out there for her that are more well-deserving of her time and energy. But pulling out those journals and reflecting on like my thought processes back then, all of the, the fears and the limiting beliefs that I was overcoming just to make the decision to start, to look at that over two years later, to look at how much has changed in my life, the confidence that I have built, the self-love that I have built, the friendships that I have made, the business that I have built, like, I, <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, like so much can change and just so much can change in a short period of time. And so many people don't want to try something new, get out of their comfort zone. They worry it's going to take too long. Like, yeah, I've been running my business for two years, but two years is not that long. <laughs> like the time is gonna pass anyway so this is my encouragement to you that like if there is something on your heart on your mind that you have been thinking about considering a dream that you have an opportunity you've been considering like it's a sign it's a sign and it's something that you should not ignore you need to pray on it or talk to whoever whatever you believe in listen to your gut listen to your intuition and trust that the desires of your heart are there for a reason because they lead you to your purpose I just, I'm overflowing with gratitude and passion today and I just had to let that out for you guys. Yes, have gratitude, have passion, listen to your gut and your intuition, but also be proactive, do your research, think critically, and don't get yourself involved in a scam. This clip is of a Modair rep who also appears to be a teacher. Classroom, <laughs> thank you, Grammy. Um, before I go home to the crazy, I was just gonna share on here um, a little bit about the Modair business today. So I know last week I put up a poll and more with those of you that responded. Um, if you're interested in an extra stream of income, this is such an amazing, fun way to do it. Remember, social selling is so different than like an MLM model. You don't have to create a team. You're literally just sharing an affiliate link of a product that you enjoy um, or that you think you know, people who love you or watch you or, um, or so I was so excited because yesterday my sweet, sweet friend Sarah joined my team. I'm sorry. Did she really just go from social selling is different than an MLM because you don't have to build the team immediately into, I'm so excited. My friend Sarah joined my team. <laughs> what? In case you're new around here, 
Here's the reminder that social selling, network marketing, social retail, direct retail, social marketing, they're all synonyms for multi-level marketing. These are all sneaky little tweaks in the terminology that MLM reps are using these days because the term MLM has such a bad reputation. But if you're in a company that encourages recruitment and building a team, congrats, you're in an MLM. No matter what other kind of cutesy nickname you try to give it to deceive people. Um, as a social marketer and she signed up and now she's off and running and I'm just like, laying awake at night and thinking about the months that are coming that summer's around the corner and just like having these dreams of how I can like invest more time and supporting these people who are starting out and just joining my team and just hopeful I'm like putting that out there and just um if that's meant to be that I hope more people will do the same so I just want to like see you guys blessed see you have an additional stream of income see you build confidence in these friendships and just um just jump in with me. So anyways, I'm just going to throw that out there. This poor teacher who is most likely overworked and underpaid is saying that she quote, lays awake at night dreaming about the summer and how she can use that time to work her Modere business. Rip my heart out and stomp on it. Why don't you? Teachers are such easy targets for MLMs because a lot of teachers have evening, weekend, and summer jobs because they're so underpaid and because they're not making ends meet with their full-time job as is. And MLM MLMs are pitched as that perfect solution that can fit into the pockets of their life and you can make money from home or on your phone. And it is heartbreaking to see teachers falling victim to that lie. If I were you and you're like curious about this in any which way, go stalk Instagram and look at her highlights. There's like work one, two, three, four. That's what I did. I like watching. So when I had like the slightest interest in it, I watched those work, um, you know, highlights of hers. I watched them over and over again. And I was like, yeah, no, I can never do that. And like, oh my gosh, no, it's too good to be true. Yeah. It's interesting, but no. And then like the more I watched and the more I was like, okay, but every single person, like everybody's winning. And then I go like stalk all the people that she, you know, shared about. And I finally just jumped in and you guys think, goodness, I jumped in. So, and then I jumped in with my enroller who was perfect perfect for me as a leader and mentor. So I hope if you feel like I could be of any benefit to you that way, and if um, I could lead you and to support you in this, that you will come back here and then reach out to me and let me know um, that you're considering it and ask me all of your questions. That's what I'm here for. Ugh, Modere really got to her. And now this poor teacher who deserves to be spending her summer resting or at least working a job that's actually gonna pay her, she's gonna be wasting her summer away trying to make Modere work. And it's really, really sad. This video is of somebody who is on the WFAB team. This is a pretty big team that was in Mon8, but they jumped ship a few months ago and they scurried on over to the cryptocurrency MLM called iGenius. <laughs> Okay, so I wanted to come on here to talk about something that I think a lot of you guys might know but don't really understand, okay, which is the law of attraction, okay? This is something that I really understood in the past few months. I always knew about the law of attraction, but I really understood what it, what it was meaning in the past few months, and I really learned how to apply this law of attraction in my life in the past few months. And if know how to really apply this law to your life you will literally build the life that you desire okay this if you learn how to master this law you will attract whatever you want to attract in your life okay and so this is a law of attraction based universe you guys okay so the more you think or talk about something the more you're going to attract just that all right the more you keep talking about it's like literally the universe like watching you and seeing like oh you keep talking about that and you keep feeling that way here's some more of that keep talking about the fact that you're broken that you don't have any money here's some more of that keep talking about the fact that you can't find find the perfect boyfriend well here's some more of that here's some more okay keep talking about the fact that you hate your job you hate your boss you hate your life or you're you're un unhappy here's some more of that here's some more of everything that you don't want but that you keep talking about that you keep feeling so stop talking about that okay because the more you talk about something and the more you think about something it becomes a belief and whatever you believe it is true and it becomes your reality okay so stop 
thinking about it. Stop, stop talking about that. All right, settle in because this is gonna be my long tangent. I'm entitled to one long tangent per video, okay? I'm gonna be straight up with you guys. I roll my eyes at the law of attraction. I tend to roll my eyes at things that defy logic and the law of attraction doesn't make logical sense to me. And I have gotten some flack for being dismissive of this in the past in previous videos and that's fine. You are entitled to believe whatever you wanna believe. Personally, for me, I see too much overlap between law of attraction and toxic positivity for me to take it seriously. A big part of law of attraction is to suppress negative thinking and to only encourage positivity. And that has the potential to become really toxic and really unhealthy when you get in the habit of just forcing down your emotions and not letting yourself process them or feel them. Allowing only good and proper thoughts is also a tactic used to keep people indoctrinated into their cults. And that's why I believe that law of attraction is so big in MLM culture, because as we know, joining an MLM doesn't make logical sense. Nobody would join an MLM if they truly realized that it was a money-making scheme and less than 1% of people actually make money and that it's not designed for everyone to be successful and that the only way you can be successful is if you recruit a ton of people under you and how timing and market saturation play into that. It's pretty difficult to convince somebody to join an MLM knowing all of those things, but you might be more successful to convince someone to join an MLM if they believe in something like law of attraction, where if they just think positively about something for long enough, they will will it into existence. I think that this philosophy can be really effective at getting people into their MLMs and also keeping them there for longer. So I don't really subscribe to the idea of law of attraction, but I do tend to subscribe more to the idea of self-fulfilling prophecies. I'll put a diagram right here to make it more clear, hopefully, but essentially it's the way that our thoughts and beliefs and expectations about something influence our behavior and therefore influence our results. For example, Example, nearly two years ago when I first started my YouTube channel, at that point, I had a very strong dislike of MLMs. It was a super fun topic to talk about with my friends. We would get together, we would vent about it, and I would consume a lot of anti-MLM content on YouTube and Instagram. But at that time, I told myself and I believed there's not space for me here. There's too many great creators making really great content on this topic. Plenty of people have been there, done that. There's not room for me. I wouldn't bring anything unique to it. So guess what? I did didn't believe that I would be good at making anti-MLM videos because I just expected that they wouldn't turn out well and that nobody would watch them. So I put it off for over a year and therefore my actions and my outcomes were a direct reflection of what I believed. And finally, one day I started to think about it differently. You know what? Maybe there is space for me. I think I do have something to offer here. I think I could be really good at this if I just gave it a shot. And with that shift in my own beliefs came a shift in my actions actions and outcomes, and the rest is kind of history. So the point being, I'm not the type of person to subscribe to the law of attraction in the sense that you can just hope and wish for something long enough that the universe is gonna hand it to you, no. I think that self-fulfilling prophecies make more logical sense in that your thoughts and beliefs have the ability to impact the way you show up in the world and the actions you take, or in some cases, the actions you decide not to take and how those are gonna impact your outcomes and the achievement of certain goals. But if you think about it, the idea of a self-fulfilling prophecy doesn't really apply very well to MLMs because you can believe that you're gonna be good at it. You can take actions that you think are gonna get yourself closer to those goals, but there's still a pretty good chance that those outcomes are not gonna be what you expected because MLMs are a numbers game where you need the timing, the numbers, and the luck to all be in your favor in order for you to achieve the goals that you're after. And maybe that's why self-fulfilling prophecies aren't really addressed in MLMs and people tend to think more on the law of attraction side of it because most people can't be be successful no matter how hard they try. So they're made to believe that they just need to continue thinking positively, toxic positivity, and hopefully one day they're gonna attract that success from the universe. Thank you for humoring me on my tangent. <laughs> Again, I realize that not everybody's gonna agree on that, completely fine, but I love when topics like this come up. It forces me to think about things in a way that I've never have before. So thank you for coming with me down that rabbit hole. Moving on. You know when people are just getting around with their friends and they start talking about their problems and it's like like everybody's talking about their problems it's like a pity party okay oh no but this happened to me oh no but me it's worse this happened to me and i went through that and all oh, this boy did that to me and i'm broke i can buy this oh my god my buddy i'm like you know that stop doing that it doesn't serve you at all it doesn't serve you at all doing that the more you talk about that the more you're gonna attract just more of 
you're gonna attract just more of that. I do think there's a difference between venting and ruminating though. It can be healthy to vent. It can be healthy to get together with your girlfriends, chat it up, vent about the annoying things going on in your life. That doesn't mean that you're letting those things define you or that you're letting negativity infiltrate your brain. And what she's saying right now is stop thinking negatively. Don't let yourself do that, only think positively. And that, in my opinion, can be really toxic and could be considered a form of brainwashing. And you know what you should actually be doing? You know what you should actually be doing? It's come to the event that we're having the 28th of, 28th of May in Toronto. Because this is where you'll learn how to actually change your circumstances, the circumstances of what's happening in your life currently. If you don't like being broke, perfect. You should come to this event. You want more freedom in your life? Perfect. You should come to this event. You don't like your boss, you don't like your job, you're unhappy, perfect. You should come to this event. You wanna travel more? Perfect, you should come to this event. You want new friends, you want a community of like-minded people? Perfect, you should come to this event, okay? If you're here sitting around with your friends or complaining about your life and everything that is happening to you or life, life is hard and this and this and this is happening to me and this is happening to me, stop doing that. It will just attract more of that. You will continue to get more of what it is that you think about. You will continue to get more of what it is that you talk about, what, what it is that you embody to be true. Stop doing that. What will actually change the circumstances in your life, what is actually going to change your life and change your financial situation and change what it, whatever you want to change in your life is you coming to this event. Because this event will expand your mind and this event will open new doors for you going to that event is not gonna change your life. The purpose of that event is to try and suck you into a cryptocurrency pyramid scheme so that the people who recruit you can make a quick buck. They don't get paid unless you join. That's why they're holding this event and that's why they want you to sign up, not because it's actually in your best interest. Okay, and new doors, meaning new level unlocked, okay, meaning new opportunities, meaning new life, all right? So I'm gonna see you guys there at this event in Toronto 28th of May, you can still purchase your ticket, okay? And listen, we're, they are selling really, really fast, okay? So make sure to click the link in the next story, buy your ticket, use my, use my promo code for $10 off. Literally, the ticket, you guys, is 20 bucks, okay? With the $10 off that I'm giving you, 20 bucks. Literally, it's the price of my Starbucks when I take a sandwich and a coffee. I'm not kidding, okay? So for the price of a Starbucks, so for the price of a Starbucks, you literally get access to this event, which is the financial freedom formula. I said what I said. This event is literally the financial freedom formula. Is the financial freedom formula that you join an MLM and recruit the most people? Because I just told you that for free. You don't need to waste 20 bucks and go to this event just to learn how to be successful in a pyramid scheme. This event will convert your time into money, money into investment, investment into cash flow, cash flow into lifestyle. If you're here sitting around and complaining about your life right now, the fact that you hate this and this and that, your boss, your job, you want more freedom, you want more lifestyle, you want more, more traveling, you want more... I better see you at this event. Because I don't know about you, but I'm not about to wait until I'm 65 to finally retire and live my life. I'm not about to do that, okay? So I better see you at this event. And also, everybody that buy a ticket with me will get access to a private double mastermind you guys the day before the event the 27th we're gonna have a private mastermind the video kind of cuts off at the end but you get it honestly i feel like this wfab team is heading down the road of being network marketing coaches or something which is kind of the new and trendy thing to do as we briefly talked about earlier with the no shame sales game instagram account it's like they're trying to sell the secrets to success but there is no secret it's a scam within a scam basically more and more people in mlms are putting on these masterminds, these training sessions, these retreats, and they're selling tickets to people to come and hear about the financial freedom formula. But the way I see it, this is just another way to suck money out of people who are financially desperate and struggling in their MLMs. What could they possibly tell you at these events that's going to magically make you more successful? Because as I've already said in this video, the only thing you need to know is that you need to recruit the most people and the rest is just BS. Everything else they say is completely irrelevant. It's a whole bunch of these logical fallacies to help you dodge and weave the critical thinking. This is something that somebody posted in a mom swap group. I'm going to block out the name of it, but my assumption is this is a group of women in the same geographical area 
all a part of this community Facebook group sharing tips and tricks or links or suggestions or advice or whatever you do in a mom swap group. I don't know, I wouldn't know. But it says, good morning beauties. I'm looking for a few ladies to work in partnership with. I know lots of us own businesses and I want to support other boss babes and vice versa. I'm looking for an awesome esthetician for waxing, a personal trainer, cleaning company, car detailer, and the occasional cat sitter. I have access to 300 plus health and wellness, weight loss, clean beauty, and natural cleaning products. Message me if you think we could help each other out and put good old fashioned bartering back into play. <laughs> and the person who actually sent me these screenshots commented on this person's post and says, what company are you with? And she comes right out with it and says, Amway, we have several brands across home, health, and beauty. Feel free to message me to see if we can help each other. This is new for me. I don't think I've ever seen an MLM rep openly admit that they want to barter and exchange goods and services. And this is misleading because she says, I know lots of us own businesses. No, honey, other people own businesses. You're in Amway. And the tone of this is kind of her asking other legitimate business owners to provide their services to her in exchange for Amway products. How much do you wanna bet that she's got a stockpile of products in her home? Cause she's trying to hit quotas and buy ranks and stay active. And now she has all of this back stock that she's trying to pawn off on other people and she's calling it payment. <laughs> Just imagine being an esthetician and at the end of your session, your client tries to pay you in Amway products instead of cash. It's honestly insulting. Cause nobody wants your dang MLM products. Nobody wants that to be their compensation for providing you a service. <laughs> Not a fair trade in my opinion. And with that, my friends, it's all I have to show you for this MLM top fails video. If you ever come across stuff like this on social media that you want me to include, the instructions for how to send it to me on Google Drive are in the description box. I tried to make it as easy as possible with a step-by-step -step list. I don't accept things on Instagram because I open the message, I go, oh, that's a good one. And then I forget about it and it gets completely lost. Google Drive is definitely the preferred way to go thank you for everyone who has taken the time to do that. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I'll see you in my next one real soon.